Think about roots moving in all directions under a soil, connecting so many different organisms to each other, so many different plants to each other, growing infinitely in all directions, but still creating a very, very stable ground on which things can continuously grow and evolve. I would call it the root network of planet Earth. Mycelium is simply the roots of mushrooms. If you leave it alone to grow, it would become a shiitake or a portobello. And we have eaten shiitake and portobello, so we can eat the mycelium. Hi, um, my name is Mazen. I am based in Hamburg uh, for more than 12 years, but I originally come from Lebanon, uh, where I was born and raised. Made the move to Germany to do my PhD in uh, biotechnology and synthetic biology and from there shifted into um, reimagining and rethinking food production. We look for um, edible mushroom mycelium. So this is mushrooms that you can usually buy in the supermarket or that you usually eat um, on your plates. We're able to um, separate the mycelium from that and then we grow it in the lab in a very uh, controlled environment in a very controlled condition where we allow the right temperature, the right um, uh, fermentation conditions. Uh, we put the mycelium in uh, fermenters similar to the beer industry, and then in a couple of days, um, the fermentation is finished. What we have at the end of that is a lot of mycelium, what we call biomass, which is high in protein, has very good fiber, has a lot of nutrition, and this is what we then use as a main ingredient to go into the kitchen and develop final products around. Edible mushrooms are known to deliver rich taste, high in umami, and so does the biomass we produce. And we need a certain bite and mouthfeel for the products uh, we are producing. So if we look at food production and um, the food systems and animal agriculture account for almost 25% of man-made greenhouse gas emissions. We not only talk about CO2 emissions, we're talking about water consumption that is needed for animal agriculture. We're talking about the amount of land that is needed for animal agriculture. I genuinely believe we do not have to replace meat. Uh, we need to create better alternatives. So I love how directly we move from the lab and from our production. And when we come to the kitchen, it becomes only about emotions and connections through food. So I believe what we are doing here is really the future. It's not only about how the product tastes, it's more about how does it cook? How does it behave in a pan? I strongly believe this is a very, very important factor in telling people that changing their habits will not really require that they change also how they cook. We are setting up a few collaborations also with restaurants and food services, especially in Europe, where people would be able to um, taste and try our products early next year. Um, and by, by the mid of next year, we would be operating in three continents. We spend a lot of time talking to consumers to understand what are actually their needs. We have also internally a team um, coming from 20 plus different nationalities because we want to understand how do different cultures and different nationalities experience new foods, celebrate new foods. It tastes like Christmas in your mouth. <laughs>